Hi, this is Steve at BlessedHopeForever.com and we've been studying together in the first epistle of the Corinthians verse by verse and in our last study together we, had, we were in verse 13 of chapter 12. We read that, uh, for as the body is one in verse 12 and has many members and all members of that one body being many or one body, so also is the Christ, it's articulated, for, for we all have been baptized in one spirit into one body. And that's what we're going to talk about here in this video. Whether we be Jew or Gentile, whether we're, we're bond or free, uh, we've been made to drink of that one spirit. We've been made to drink of that one spirit. And... Uh, so this is the second reference to the body of Christ. If you'll turn with me to Romans chapter 12. Romans 12, beginning at verse 4, uh, we have, uh, we have for as, uh, we have many members in one body and all members have not the same uh, office. Uh, so we being many, are one body in Christ and every one members one of another having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us whether prophecy let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith or ministry let us wait on our ministry or he that teaches on teaching or he that exhorts on exhortation he that giveth let him do it with simplicity and he that ruleth with diligence he that showeth mercy with cheer cheerfulness now in first corinthians a body of believers who were very carnal and apparently we're in need of much instruction. Uh, the second reference to we being one body occurs in this 12th chapter. And uh, you'll notice in uh, the reference in Romans when we have uh, one body in Christ with many members, that's something new in Scripture. I, for one, and, and there are many who disagree with this. I re so I, I, re I repeat again, as I have so many times in these videos, that this is God's Word, and what it says is true. And what I say may or may not be true, and I'm not asking anyone. No one is asked to believe anything that I say. We're simply here to study together God's Word. I believe that the mystery that had been hidden uh, from ages uh, and generations was the fact that Jew and Gentile are one body in Christ. The concept of the body of Christ is foreign to the Scriptures until we reach Romans chapter 12. In Romans 12, we have a doctrinal statement that we are many members in one body in Christ. There were no tongues, no interpretation of tongues, no miracles, just those gifts or graces that were appropriate in the body of Christ. And now in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 here, we are told... We're now told that we have been identified in that, in, in that body by some sovereign work. And if you look at the 13th verse, somebody did the baptizing. And it's an aorist passive. Uh, you've heard me talk about the aorist as well as the passive voice in the grammar. We have all been baptized into one body. Somebody did that. I don't think it's spirit baptism. That uh, and yet many Christians, you know, particularly the Pentecostals, they talk about the baptism of the Spirit 
And, uh, and this is the verse that they usually use. Somebody, folks, somebody baptized us in the Spirit, and we've been made to drink of, of the Spirit, to drink of that one Spirit. And those are both passive voices. Uh, we had nothing to do with it. And I believe Christ himself is the baptizer. Uh, many believe it's God, but as I mentioned, uh, particularly those of, of the Pentecostal persuasion believe that it, that's the Holy Spirit. But someone has identified us with Christ, or identified us into Christ. Uh, there are also those at the other end who believe that this is water baptism, and if you're not baptized in, some, in a physical act using water, then you're not a member of the body of Christ. If you do a study on, a word study on baptizo, baptism, you'll find out that's not the case at all. And there are many who believe that. Uh, the word baptized here means to be identified with. I don't believe it's some physical act, some... Uh, some physical act done because you wanted it done that makes you a member of the body of Christ. Because we are told here that uh, in verse 12, for as the body is one and hath many members, and all the members of that one body being many are one body, so also is the Christ, and we've been identified into that body. I and mean, I think that that was started at Pentecost. Now, uh, I think we're back at Pentecost. Now, in the 11th chapter of Acts, this is what God did at the first. In the third chapter of Ephesians, uh, it's been a while since we went through the epistle to the Ephesians, but in, in the third chapter, verse 5, uh, we read, Which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. The Spirit did the revealing, not the baptizing. And now we've gone from Romans to Ephesians, and in both cases we have no tongues, no interpretation of tongues, no working of miracles, no healing. And here we have an initiation of the body and, and we need miracles, healings, tongues in order to verify the message. I think that's why those miracles are there. There aren't very many occurrences of miracles in the scriptures. There's a lot less than you might think. Moses had miracles. He performed miracles. Uh, Elijah uh, had miracles in both cases to verify God's word. And then we didn't have any miracles until Christ came. And he performed miracles. And later on, the apostles performed miracles to verify that Christ Jesus is indeed God incarnate in human flesh and he's the fulfillment of prophecy and, and I understand that that's that's an area of uh, where there's lots of discussion and lots of debate uh, but I believe that that which is perfect which is complete you know when that which is perfect has come uh, that which is perfect uh, uh, that's the word of God being complete and these miracles were to establish that testimony and the last occurrence of miracles dearly beloved in God's word is by Satan and by the Antichrist he's going to use miracles for the same reason if he can perform these miracles he must be God Right? He, he sits in the temple of God, showing himself that he's God. You know, somebody wants a miracle so bad that they think somebody, you know, in Florida 
is raising the dead and they're not you know boy don't get me started on that on some of that junk it is it is God the Lord Jesus Christ who identified us in his body and we are made to drink of the one spirit the Holy Spirit and now we're introduced to that body and so you know we're gonna we're gonna take a serious look at that body I think it's a, a marvelous thing that, the, that we are one body in Christ. Think of it, the body of Christ. The body's not one member, but, but one. Uh, the body is not one member, it's many members. Anybody knows that, but do we really know it? I mean, think of that for a moment. Dearly beloved, the Christians that you do not like are members of that same body. Verse 15, if the foot should say, and I think the Greek says, but uh, suppose the foot should say, since I'm not the hand, I'm not of the body. Uh, does that mean in any way that it's not of the body? Well, of course not. Does that mean that it's not of the body? No. Uh, it can say that, but it doesn't mean it, it isn't of the body. Now, that's interesting. Clearly, folks, from the text, no matter how you feel, you can't change your position in the body of Christ. I don't know what it is, but you can't change it. You know, you say, well, I, Steve, I, I didn't want to be a hand, or I didn't want to be a foot, or I didn't want to be an eye, or, or whatever. You can't do that. That text says that you can't change that. It's obvious that the Holy Spirit wants us to see that the body of Christ is one body, we live together, we rejoice together, we worship together, we, we study together, we live together, we suffer together, but we shouldn't fight with members of our own body. We function as a body. And if we don't do that, well, we're really not much of a body. And the point here, I believe the point here is being pushed really hard here by the Holy Spirit that we are members of that one body. It's being stressed over and over and over again. You know, no human eye would, would say that it wants to be an ear or, or vice versa. It's ridiculous. When we look at the human body, you know, so why isn't it ridiculous in our life in the body of Christ? I think that we're being taught that we have to put up with each other, folks. Just as, as, as we put up with the members of our body, you know, our physical body. Now, you may not like your nose, okay? You may not like your feet. But it's the nose and the feet that God gave you. God gave you. Same is true when it comes to the body of Christ. But now God placed the members, every one of them, in the body as it pleased Him. Not me, not you, but Him. He did it. God did it. God's sovereignty is clearly seen here in, the, in this text. God did it. And, and one of the greatest criticisms I've ever, I've ever had over the years is, is stressing the sovereignty of God. I'd, and folks, I'd hate to worship a God that's not sovereign. What, I mean, what kind of a God would that be? If, if my will is stronger than God's will, then folks, I'm in big trouble. You know, and so are you. God placed the members, every one of them in the body, as it 
pleased him. <clears throat> Why isn't there a reference in the Old Testament to the revelation of a body in the Old Testament? Because that scripture is given to us so that we, we can see what Christ did. The Lord Jesus Christ had to die in our place. Otherwise, we would have no hope. But now has God set the members, every one of them, in the body. Doesn't that look like we are now being told how this started and what it is? He didn't do this back in Isaiah. He didn't do that when he called Abraham out of the Chaldees. Apparently, this is something new. And so this is another verse that persuades me to believe that that mystery is the church. Now, there are many who don't believe that. If the mystery is the church, then it wasn't revealed in ages past or in generations before, and it wasn't revealed when Christ was preaching here on earth. And so the church is not in Matthew 24. And that kind of shocks people, but that's, that's the truth. And, and that seems like a settled transaction to me, and it doesn't to many people. I'm not, and I'm not asking you to agree with that, folks. I'm asking you to think about it. That's, that's all I'm asking. I think we're looking at the experience that took place at Pentecost. I think we're looking at the initiation of the church. The church is identified as the body of Christ in our present chapter. So, now, now has God set the members? This is something new, and we're back at Pentecost at the initiation of the church. He set them, God set them in that body as he pleased. If they were all one member, there, there wouldn't be a body. Verse 19. Yeah. Now, now that seems like an obvious statement. I mean, that's, that's the second time. Uh, it seems to be something that, that doesn't need to be said, but we, we need to be driven in our thinking, folks, from our human body to the spiritual body of Christ and I do not believe that we often treat other members of the body of Christ like we treat the members of our own physical body you know I'm, I'm reminded folks of how partial I am to the members of my body when I hit my thumb with a hammer you know we're pretty careful when it comes to the members you know of our physical body think please think about that every member has some purpose and we we treat them with honor i think when you know you hit your thumb with a hammer i think the thumb hurts but the truth of it folks is that the whole body suffers when you do that if i hit my if I fall off my horse, you know, I might hit the ground on my butt, but my whole body's going to hurt. And I believe the Holy Spirit is going out of His way to drive home to us that we don't treat members of the body of Christ like we treat the members of our own physical body. And that's a shame. That, it, that is, that's it's a shame. Because God put them there. Dearly beloved, there's not a single person in the body of Christ that I, I don't love. I'd do anything. You can have the shirt off my back. You know, there's a, there's a whole bunch of you that I disagree with. You know, I think you've got, you have the oddest ideas in the world, and the way that you act sometimes, you know, seems just a little bit crazy to me, but I love you. I really do. 
God set the members there. He set them there. I think God put His people here, right here on this channel. And I don't want anyone here that, that, that wasn't set here by God. That's why we're here. And I am thankful. God knows I'm thankful for every one of you. The I cannot. It cannot. It's an absolute negative there in the Greek. It doesn't have the power. It doesn't have the ability to say, I have no need of the hand. You know, the, the eye doesn't even know what the hand's for. Probably it just cannot do that. It isn't that it shouldn't do that. It can't do that. Well, now let's get away from the human body. You cannot say that that person's not a member of Christ. You can't say that. Uh, Jesus was the only one who was able to say, you are of your father, the devil. We can't say that. What the Lord said is if they're not against us, they're for us. And there are some people who are fantastically ignorant when it comes to biblical truth, but, but who give every evidence of loving the Lord and believing that He's died in their place and He's redeemed them. That's my brother in Christ. That's my sister in Christ. And, and this whole conversation here, folks, think... Look back, okay? The whole th discussion started out, nobody speaking by the Spirit of God can call Jesus Christ accursed, and nobody speaking by the Spirit of God can say that Jesus is Lord but by the Holy Spirit. Sure, there's a lot of ignorance and stupidity uh, in the body of Christ, every one of us from the top down. And there's so much criticism. Uh, you don't believe me, just read the comments on YouTube. I, I don't understand how some people can believe what they believe. I, you know, have you ever read this verse or that? You know, uh, you know what, what's wrong with you? Don't you understand, you know, what God is saying? The question is, are they a member of the body of Christ? That's the question. And if they are, then they should be treated with love and respect. You cannot say you don't need me. And I can't say that I don't need you. You know, even if we are, a, you know, maybe even if we are perhaps a thorn in one another's flesh, maybe you don't know whether someone is a member of the body of Christ. Maybe you don't have any company with him. Uh, but that doesn't mean that you don't need him. You just, you just don't, you just don't have any company with him. We we can't say we don't need those other members of the body. You know, it's it's just silly to think that this would happen in the physical body. I wouldn't I wouldn't say that about my physical body. The members of my physical body. Why should it happen in the body of Christ? Christ died for every one of us. He so loved every member of that body that He gave Himself freely. He died in their place. And He established those members in the body of Christ. Verse 22, Much more those members of the body which seem, the word there in the Greek is seem, and it just appears that they, you know, it doesn't say they are. They seem to be more feeble are absolutely essential. Wow. Okay. From, you know, from a Christian standpoint, it'd be easy to say the body would be a well of a lot better off if we just got rid of all the Armenians out there. You know, and then we got rid of all the, you know, the Pelagians out there. And, and then, of course, we got a real problem because, you know, that would, you know, leave only, only the Calvinists and and, and then they would immediately fight between, uh, you know, uh, you know, over uh, super Calvinists, uh, four point uh, Calvinists, uh, three point Calvinists, five point Calvinists, you know, and so on. And, you know, so it would go on and it'd go on down until, 
Well, it'd go on down until we'd only have one person left, and that person would be me. These feeble members, folks, are essential, okay? Think about it. If it were not for those weaker vessels, those weaker brothers and sisters, if it were not for them, where would ministry be? You know, they're absolutely essential. Well, we're going to stop here at verse 22, so we'll be at the 23rd verse, the Lord willing, next time. Uh, if you feel like coming back. Let's close with a word of prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we're thankful, we're so thankful for your word, so thankful for the mighty privilege that we have to, to just think about it and, and to feast on it. It's so easy to think that we know a lot when there's so much that we don't know compared to the knowledge of God we know so little but oh Lord may we be filled with a desire to study to show ourselves approved and a deep desire to love one another from a pure heart fervently in Christ's name I pray I ask you to filter out the foolishness sealed to our hearts that which is true Amen Thanks for listening. Rest in you. Until next time, this is Steve. Thanks for watching.